Hello and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In the last two videos we uh, did the analysis and the design, or at least a little bit of the analysis and design, looked at how we would do the analysis and design for a uh, coding project. And once you have defined exactly what the problem is that you're trying to solve, or at least you have a, a very solid definition of it, and you have also uh, described in reasonable detail how you're going to break things up and how you're going to go about putting the pieces together, then you can actually sit down and start writing code for it. And so that's what we want to do here, is start writing some of the code for our uh, electronic classroom program. Um, and we can start off, so we're going to be doing this in Eclipse, and <clears throat> we can work off of what we had previously, uh, the UML diagram that we had wit written before. Now, the client over here is going to have a GUI associated with it. The server does not necessarily have uh, that graphical interface. Most of the time the server should kind of run silently in the, in the background. We don't yet know how to do networking. Uh, we have a few chapters to go before we learn how to do networking. So at least for the, the time being, the two of these are very independent. Uh, and we can start to set up some classes, but it's, it's a little bit, we'll, we'll run into some roadblocks as far as uh, what we can actually do with them. Still, it's worth it for us to go ahead and get started with some things just to so show you what's going on. Now, <clears throat> because I want to keep some organization here, I am actually going to go ahead and create a package. Now, packages really just serve as a way of organizing code. You've seen packages before. For example, list is in scala.collection.immutable, um, and the source for reading from files is in scala.io, and there's a package called Scala.swing, which has all the GUI libraries in it. Well, <clears throat> we've been using other people's GUIs or other people's packages. Now we're going to make our own. And the idea of a package is that you put uh, classes and objects that are closely related inside of the same package. It helps you to, to not have namespace conflicts. So, for example, there are multiple things that are called list, but as long as they're all in separate packages, that's generally fine. Uh, and it also just gives you a, a way to organize your code. <clears throat> Generally, the packages themselves will wind up being as separate uh, directories, and so it really does help you to, to organize stuff. So I'm going to create a package here. And you notice all of these say Scala or whatnot. This one just says package. Uh, the uh, the the approach of having packages be subdirectories is actually borrowed very much from Java, uh, and <clears throat> Java absolutely requires that packages be directories and that the files have to be in the appropriate subdirectory. Scala is a bit more laid back about these requirements, but unless you have a reason to use the additional flexibility of Scala, and there are places where you, sh where you need to use the additional flexibility, that's why it is more flexible. But unless you're, you really have a need to do that, it's generally good to follow the, the Java approach. And in fact, you can even see here, this is that Eclipse is telling us this is a Java project, so, or a Java package. So I'm gonna call my package E-class, uh, just so you can see, uh, Typically, your uh, packages are in all lowercase, and you can have periods separating different sub-packages. So there's our E-class package, and if I right-click on that and I do a new, now I can, for example, create a Scala object. And we have two different objects that were in our UML. We have the server main <coughs> mm. 
and we would want to put inside of here a main method and you should probably notice something that happened here that we have never seen before because this was created inside of a package there actually is a package statement up at the top of the file in reality this is what matters uh, the package statement is is what really says that this is inside of a package uh, the organization into into a subdirectory is just useful for being able to to find the code for you so we have our server main We'll make our client main, and we can go ahead and copy the main from here over to here. The server had some private data in it, so if you look at this, we had semesters and we had a semester class. So we can come into here and create a new Scala class called a semester and then the server main would have private data uh, and this is one of those questions how are we going to, to store this I had actually been envisioning that the server main is mutable um, in which case we uh, could use a variable list uh, to, to store it. We'll go with that for now. In in the following chapter, we'll or in, in two chapters from now, we'll see some other alternatives for this. So semesters is a list of semester parentheses and that actually gets us what we have in here in our uh, class diagram and then our semester has a similar type of thing with different courses inside of it so we would want to come in here and create our Scala class for a course And as soon as we have that, we can come back to the semester and do private var uh, courses <coughs> and make it an empty list of course. And so we could continue going on with this. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time pushing it too far because it turns out there are certain aspects of this that we really don't know how to represent yet. And so in the next chapter, we'll learn more about things like there should be a relationship between a student and an instructor, uh, quite possibly. There will probably be relationships between quizzes and tests and exercises. And we don't know how to represent those relationships yet. So I don't want to push the coding too far for this chapter. Once we get into the next chapter, we will start to have the, the ability to kind of revisit, we can relook at our design um, and possibly flesh out the analysis a bit more, talk about exactly what's going to happen when you go into a quiz and then how we're going to put that in the code. So I'm going to stop this video for here and we'll see you again soon.